Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Life Coaching. And uh, you can see Mr. Polly in the background there. Mr. Polly has gotten really old and uh, he has to wear diapers. So he's taking a little nappy poo. I have a video today which is in the theme of Christmas and also in the theme of uh, recovery from narcissistic abuse. It's called, It's a Wonderful Life in Spite of Narcissistic Abuse. Last night, um, you know, yesterday was Christmas and all my family had piled in and piled out and it was about 7.30, 8 o'clock and we were out of things to do and tired and too tired to play games and my daughter suggested a movie and she says what's a classic Christmas movie so I said it's a wonderful life <coughs> I am going to assume that all of you have seen it's a wonderful life if you haven't seen it you really need to see it I was one of those people who for many years hadn't seen it and then when I did see it, it just really spoke to me. And it had been a little while since I'd seen it. And again, it spoke to me pretty powerfully. It's a wonderful life in spite of narcissistic abuse. I don't know if you guys know this, but It's a Wonderful Life was a massive failure in the box office. But in one of the list of the best movies of all time it's ranked number 11. after i've experienced narcissistic abuse when i watch a movie i'm not looking for narcissism i'm not looking to um, uh, dissect the movie um, things just come to me and um, many times people don't see how pervasive uh, narcissistic characters are in uh, movies um, they make the best villains the number one villain of all time rated in the movies is Hannibal Lecter Hannibal the cannibal from Silence of the Lambs um, there's Mr. Polly moving around a little bit the number two uh, villain of all time is Darth Vader and number six on the list is the malignant narcissist in the movie It's a Wonderful Life, Mr. Potter. So um, Mr. Potter was played by the great actor Lionel Barrymore. Um, he played the part in a wheelchair because Lionel Barrymore had uh, polio and he was uh, confined to a wheelchair. Um, I think he's one of the most obvious malignant narcissists in film history. He uh, just, you know, showed himself to be highly manipulative. Uh, he was driven to control uh, even more than he was driven by money he, he was he was addicted to money but the thing that really bothered him is that he couldn't take over the Bailey's savings and loan and that drove him crazy that he couldn't have that control he was vicious he was selfish he was grandiose uh, he had nobody to love him and he loved nobody um, he was completely lacking in empathy he made Scrooge look like a sweetie pie this guy was mean he was uh, bitter and greedy and calloused and evil and uh, by nature he, he was a financial predator an emotional predator he was a bully um, something that I noticed uh, George Bailey in his home had a picture of his father on the wall but mr. Potter both in his office and in his home had pictures of who himself 
you know, grandiose pictures, uh, big picture above the, the, the fireplace. Um, Richard Corliss of Time Magazine described Barrymore's portrayal as Scrooge, the Grinch, and Simon Legree in one craggly, crabby package. So there was the malignant narcissist in the movie and the empath in It's a Wonderful Life, of course, is played by an even greater actor, uh, the great uh, Jimmy Stewart. He was selfless. As I said, he was an empath. He was no doubt a codependent. Um, he loved people. He built community. Um, his self-sacrificing lifestyle led to a life of near poverty. Um, and he felt trapped in having to fight his father's fight against this diabolical, evil Mr. Potter. I believe if you'll watch the movie, you'll see that George Bailey had complex PTSD from all the way from his injured ear in saving his brother's life to being slapped around by the druggist uh, and causing his ear to bleed. And then um, the terror that he felt during that financial crisis when he knew that there was going to be all kinds of negative consequences. He was, he was uh, sitting at a bar in a daze. He had wrecked his car. And then he went out and stood on a bridge and contemplated and fought, uh, jumping in. But George Bailey wasn't the perfect man. He wasn't a saint. He was also quite bitter. And he had many unfulfilled dreams. And deep down, he actually was an unhappy man. And when he was under attack from narcissistic abuse, uh, he could be abusive himself. He could rage and be sarcastic. He had been oppressed and traumatized and trapped by Mr. Potter as he was growing up. And his father was doing battle with Mr. Potter. And then his father died an untimely death and George is left holding the bag. So... Uh, this malignant narcissist caused a lifetime of occasional terror, ultimately of a, a really bad panic attack, of constant anxiety about money and whether or not the savings and loan was going to survive. And when Uncle Billy uh, lost the $8,000, and it led to a financial and a possible legal nightmare, there was hopelessness. Um, there was a depression that had actually been building slowly his entire life. Many times as codependents, um, we don't take care of ourselves well enough, and therefore um, when a shattering comes, it's a culmination of a depression that had been building for an entire lifetime. Um, uh, when the call went out to Clarence uh, from uh, Joseph up in heaven, whoever Joseph is in heaven, um, he asked, Clarence asked, well, is George Bailey sick? He said, no, he's worse than sick. He's discouraged. Have anybody out uh, of you out there felt a bone-crushing discouragement after repeated battles and woundings from narcissists in your life. So uh, it not only led to depression and discourage and hopelessness, it uh, led to a near suicide attempt that probably was going to happen. And the ironic thing about this particular suicide attempt, it wasn't an act of selfishness. Like, uh, many times 
uh, I think suicide gets described as a selfish act. This was a selfless act in the sense that uh, George had a $15,000 life insurance policy that would have cleaned up the $8,000 mess and given his family a little bit of money to live on. He was worth more dead than he was worth alive. And he was trying to figure out a way to problem solve. He was trying to figure out a way to keep the savings and loan alive, even if it meant his own death. So I drew uh, 10 lessons from the movie, from, from my experience. Um, I, I see myself as sort of a, a modern day George Bailey. Um, I'll just be vulnerable with you here and tell you. Um, I've struggled mightily from recurring complex PTSD symptoms. My initial shattering was, of course, in my childhood. But then in my adulthood, it was in April of 2015 and really all through 2015 was a really uh, a difficult shattering. Um, but I've had recurring uh, symptoms after uh, a blow was struck in my life by some, some narcissist. Um, not by my wife, um, uh, Rinda. Um, however, in a video we shared, uh, doing marital work can uh, trigger some complex PTSD symptomology. But there are millions of Mr. Potters out there. There are hard people, angry people, people with agendas, people that are mean, people that just want to hurt you. And if you aren't good at recognizing them and protecting yourself from them, then you'll get punched in the face. So I fear narcissists like Mr. Potter, but in a recent video, I shared that I fear myself more than I fear the Mr. Potters of the world because many of my wounds, and I suspect many of your wounds, have been self-inflicted. Uh, in, Mine are self-inflicted by my own obliviousness, by me not taking precautions to protect myself from danger, sometimes by my codependency, sometimes by my lack of wisdom, sometimes by my own self-centeredness. Um, once you've been shattered, you have a fragile system. You don't just get 100% strong in your Rocky Balboa and you're walking through life, you know, thriving and kicking ass and taking names. I wish it was that way. And there are seasons of that, but there are also seasons of re-injury. And you have to work on your recovery every day. Part of... George Bailey's problem is he was in business with Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy was an alcoholic. Uncle Billy was a bumbling old fool. And Uncle Billy accidentally misplaced the future of the savings and loan when he handed, of all people, he handed the $8,000 to Mr. Potter accidentally as it was wrapped up in a newspaper. Be careful who you do business with. If they have an addiction, they could put you in the line of fire. So being in business with family who was an alcoholic, who was bumbling and irresponsible, is part of what, what led to George's uh, shattering. And then, of course, there was uh, Mr. Potter uh, ready to attack and sick you know, the law on him, even though George Bailey had done nothing wrong, he had done nothing but give and serve and love and build community and sacrifice and care about people. Those were his sins. So are there any other modern day 
George Bailey's out there where you're an empath and you've repeatedly uh, done battle with narcissists and taken it on the chin? Are there people that have experienced hopelessness and depression and discouragement and figuratively or literally been standing on the bridge looking out into the waters uh, wondering you know can I make it am I strong enough to make it um, is it best to give up um, are there George Bailey's out there who, who have been so ravaged by the wounding of a narcissist that you feel beaten, you feel defeated, uh, you just want to cry, you want to curl up in a ball, you don't want to get out of bed? Um, I think there are millions of us out there too. So here's the 10 lessons that I've learned. Your, your life is probably not going to feel so wonderful most of the time. Uh, the title of my video is, It's a Wonderful Life in Spite of Narcissistic Abuse. But just like George, you'll need to be reminded of your worth. You'll need to be reminded that you're worthy. You need to be reminded that you're good because after a clash with a narcissistic organization or a narcissistic individual, you'll feel like shit. You'll, you'll feel worthless. You won't feel like a good person. You won't have hope. You won't have faith. You need to be reminded that you actually have a bright future. Um, you need to be reminded, like George, how many people really do love you. You need to be reminded that you actually are competent. After getting your butt kicked by a narcissist, you don't feel like a competent human being. And you also need to be reminded how many people that you've helped along the way and what a difference that you've made in the lives of many other people. I'll get to more of that in a little bit. Lesson number two I took from the movie is don't obsess about wounds that have been inflicted by narcissists. I'll, I'll say that again. Uh, I'll say it this way. Try not to obsess about wounds that have been inflicted by narcissists. This is very difficult because George, when he found out about the loss of this money, uh, went into having a panic attack and he was uh, very much so having you know complex PTSD symptoms that were threatening to take his life um, these wounds are in the living tissues of your body I had a recent clash with a narcissist and and, and I just haven't been feeling well. And my wife said, well, why aren't you feeling well? And I said, I don't know. I feel like I have a wound in my belly and in my chest. And it, and it, it also makes me really tired. So the, the wound is in the living uh, uh, tissue of your body. So you have to treat your own complex PTSD every day. So consult Pete Walker's book on complex PTSD and many other videos, many of my videos talk about how to treat your own PTSD so that you're not stuck with the wounding in your emotions and in your body. So the other thing that we tend to do after being beaten down by a narcissist is worry about the possible negative outcomes of the events surrounded these woundings. George pictured uh, the closing of the Bailey uh, savings and loan. He, he, he pictured scandal. He pictured himself going to jail. Uh, he pictured being publicly shamed. So, but rather than nursing the negativity and uh, worrying about negative uh, 
outcomes, the, the thing to do in recovery is to focus your energy on your recovery and to focus your energy on healthy self-care, focus your energy on community, uh, lean into your loved ones. Many times, well last night after the movie, I had a good long snotty cry and my lovely wife was there wiping the tears from my eyes. So lean into your loved ones, uh, spend time giving to others, practice gratitude you know be grateful when you're in a funk and you've been getting your butt kicked by a narcissist everything looks dark and everything looks negative and it's hard to practice gratitude but make yourself do it make yourself uh, make a list of all the things that you're blessed with and stop focusing on the wounding in your heart, heal it, work on healing it, but don't perseverate over it. And the other uh, uh, thing to do is to pray, 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 pray. Whatever your high, higher power is, I'm not trying to get religious today. So, so I was in a bit of a funk today. I went and I met my daughter for lunch and um, I, I was ready to, to share a little bit and she she's younger she's 24 and she didn't ask what was going on with me and I had some stuff built up anyway I, I left I didn't want to dump on her and I thoroughly enjoyed the visit but I left the um, uh, a meeting for for lunch she noticed that I was she said are you nervous my, my, my knee was shaking and so I was I was having some negative PTSD energy come up I came home the house is still a bit of a wreck from the Christmas party it's um, uh, uh, sort of dreary in here today and negative energy started to build up but then I started working on this video and I was working on the inspiration of what came to me after watching the movie last night and my energy level instead of charging negative started to charge positive so get busy helping others i'm making this video because i want to reach the hopeless discouraged sad broken suicidal um beaten down george bailey's of the world and say here's 10 things you can learn that'll help you. The third thing, this is a quote from Clarence to George Bailey. He says, each, man li each man's life touches so many people. Um, I lost my camera there for a second. Each man's life touches so many other lives. And when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? Clarence had used his uh, not quite a full string uh, angel powers to create a life where George Bailey had never been born. And just like that, that remember the scene in Back to the Future where, where Biff had brought his gambling ways into the little town and uh, turned it into this evil, you know, horrible, dark, sinful place. Um, he had changed history and the same thing happened if George Bailey was never born then that little town was called uh, Potters, Pottersville you know in, in honor of this evil malignant narcissist so um, I, I've often wondered how many lives have been touched for the positive in family tree counseling associates 32 years of practice we've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of tears of people we've we've gone through thousands and thousands and thousands of boxes of tissues so many tears have been cried so many marriages have been saved um i also wonder uh if this channel has helped anybody much because uh, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit like George Bailey. 
um, sometimes I wonder if my work has made a difference. So if this channel has made a difference for you, then let me know. Uh, reach out and let me know. Uh, just write me a note. Um, because um, uh, sometimes when sometimes if you're in a battle with yourself and in a battle with a narcissist and you get wounded and you get discouraged you don't realize the good you do in the world so if this channel has helped you if you get a chance and feel inspired give us a shout okay uh, the fourth thing I learned from the movie is pray George prayed and then he got punched in the mouth by a guy so he, did, he wasn't believing in the power of his prayer but there was a whole lot of people praying for George because he was a good man and people loved him. So pray often. It works. You may not get a guardian angel come down in the flesh. You probably won't. But you probably will get some positive things happening. Number five, practice gratitude. Try to appreciate the blessings that you do have. Um, many times what I struggle with with is is like I focus on the, the past and in it instead of just having regrets um, I, I go into beating myself up because I made this decision or that decision that didn't turn out to be a wise decision um, the sixth thing that I learned is whatever you sow that too you're gonna reap so George Bailey it's been a lifetime investing in the lives of other people loving them giving to them um, giving to them financially and then when they found out that George Bailey was in his hour of need the money flowed in like a muddy river because he was reaping what he sowed so the bad guy the malignant narcissist did not win he could not beat George Bailey number seven lean into your community in your hour of need that's what um, George Bailey's wife put the word out and that's what everybody did is they showed up because he had community uh, uh, another movie recently I won't ruin it for you but uh, in the ending of Star Wars uh, the same thing is you'll win because you have community lean into other people there was a call out you know for, for the other people in the galaxy that would fight the uh, the evil empire and they showed up uh, lessons number eight is uh, selfish hoarding leads to a miserable life but sacrificial giving leads to a wonderful life number nine a lifetime of willing sacrifice makes your life wonderful for everybody around you but ultimately if you really focus on the truth and you're not nursing too many woundings it makes life wonderful for yourself um, I like the joy after uh, Ebenezer Scrooge uh, gets to see the past the present and the future and he wakes up and it's it's back to Christmas Day he has a chance to change and he's, he's running down the street singing thank you very much thank you very much that's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me and um, that kind of joy um, can come if you wake up and realize who you really are instead of nursing the wounds that have been inflicted upon you and number 10 the thing I learned is shaming yourself can be very self-destructive so George was calling himself stupid he was calling his uncle names he's calling his children's names and um, mainly he was beaten up on himself and he was shaming the the Bailey savings and loan which was a beacon of light which was God's work which was making it made a bigger difference in that community than any counseling center would have or a bigger difference than any church would have a savings and loan a little beleaguered organization changed everything because what did it do it stood in the way of a malignant narcissist who was out to spread evil and to exploit people and be a predator so 
that's what I had to share today. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I am a relationship life coach, and I have uh, some life coaching expertise in affair recovery, relationship issues, narcissistic abuse syndrome, sexual addiction, sexual abuse, uh, trauma, complex PTSD, anxiety, midlife issues, shame, and abandonment issues. You can reach me by emailing me at marksmith at familytreecounseling.com or you can reach me by calling me at 317, or don't call me, text me, 317-507-8866, 317-507-8866. Thank you for watching today. I hope you've got some inspiration. I hope you realize that your future is brighter than it feels. Thank you for watching, and God bless.